eternal Father, I offer you the body and the blood. Hallelujah. Uh, I take this moment to welcome you to this broadcast of today in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. My name is Pastor Sam Boy. In fact, Pastor is a title, but my names are Sam Boy. I'm serving the Lord in the city of Nairobi. The church is called Cathedral of Praise Ministries International. We are located in Jiru along Kangundo Road. Therefore, we call ourselves Kangundo Road Worship Center. Just when you reach Jiru, there is one petrol station called Ola. Just a light there. Behind Ola, there is a, just next to Ola, there is a Maram Road. Take that Maram Road. A few meters from there, from the main road, we are just located there. And we thank God because we have seen the hand of God. We have seen the workings of God in the church. And God continues to bless us every day. So I welcome you to church every Sunday. That is from 9.30 in the morning, first service. Then we say, start our second service at 11. And when you don't have a church in Nairobi, or maybe you are a visitor who has come to visit in Nairobi, and you'd like to go to a church on Sunday, we welcome you in the name of the Lord to come and fellowship with us. And God will bless you. I have uh, a message today uh, that I have entitled, The Fear of God. The Fear of God. I want to talk about the fear of God. And before I go to the Word of God, or maybe before I read the Word of God, I'd like us to pray first, then we go to the Word of God straight. So wherever you are, I request that you bow down before the Lord so that you can pray, and then we continue with the Word of God. Our Heavenly Father, God of all flesh, you are our God, you are our deliverer, you are our protector. I thank you this morning. I thank you this time, O oh Lord, because you've taken care of us well, every one of us. I thank you even because of the viewers who are seeing me right now on the screen. I pray for them in the name of Jesus Christ, that Lord, may you protect them, may you do them good, may you remember them, may you touch them, O oh Lord, and I know that your name is going to be glorified. As we start your word, I pray, Jehovah God, that you be with us together. Let the Holy Spirit bring even the revelation as to the word that we are going to, to, to talk about today. And your name will be exalted. We thank you and bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray and believe. Amen. Wherever you are, I want you to say amen. Say amen unto the Lord. Now, I have said that I want to talk about the fear of God. There is something called fear. Fear, it depends the way you take it. Or the way it comes upon your life. Because sometimes you might find that somebody fears death. Somebody fears an accident. Somebody, somebody fears a snake. Somebody fears a wild animal. Somebody might even fear robbers. But that is not what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the fear of God. How you can fear God in your life. And what God can do in your life if you really fear him. So I want to go and read from the book of Job. The first chapter. The first verse. Because almost every one of us have heard the story of Job. Maybe you have just, a, even if you've not read the, the word of God, or maybe the Bible from the book of Job, but you have heard at least something about this man called Job. 
So the Bible is saying this in the book of Job, chapter 1, verses 1. The Bible is saying this. Uh, I think I'm going to read from verses 1 to verses 5. Then I'll read verses 8 and verses 9. The Bible is saying that there was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright, and one that feared God, and turned away from evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His possessions also were seven thousand sheep, and three thousand camels, and five hundred yoke of oxen, and five hundred female donkeys, and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. Verses 4. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one on his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were finished, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. That is from verses 1 to verses 5. Verses 8 is saying this, and the Lord said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a blameless and an upright man, one that fears God and turns away from evil? Then Satan answered and said, And then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Let me just add verses 10. Have you not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his sons and his possessions are increased in the land. The Bible is talking about a man of God by the name Job. Job, the Bible is, the records in the Bible says that they were the first people who lived in the east part. The Bible calls it in the east. That during those days, we didn't have Asia or Europe or Africa. But there, we had the names of the areas where people were living. So the east part where Job was living it was in Asia. And the Bible is records that they were the early people, early inhabitants of the eastern part. And God was with Job. It happened that this man, <clears throat> he knew God quite early in life. And when he knew God, he decided to walk with God and to obey God and to follow God and to honor God and to fear Him. So the Bible said that this man was somebody who feared God. How did Job come to fear God? Because he knew that there is somebody, there is an authority somewhere that was beyond him. So he realized that there is a God. I didn't come from nowhere. But God created me. But this God, he is somewhere. He's living. And I know that everything I'm, I'm doing and what I want to do, I can only do when I am with this God. So he knew that there was God. This man used to worship God. This man used to offer sacrifices to God. So he's a man who used to walk with God and to speak and talk to God. So there were records in heaven that there is somebody down there in the land of Uz who fears God. So the Bible said that when the sons of God presented themselves before God, 
And when you read the Bible, very well, the sons of God are angels. And when the angels went before God, the Bible says that the Satan also was there with them. Why did Satan go be in the presence of God? Even though he was thrown out from heaven, why was he again going in the presence of God again? Because when God asked him, where have you come from? He told God that I've come from to and fro. He's just in, into the earth and from the earth. So he didn't have anywhere to abode. He didn't have a permanent home to stay. So he was just roaming here and there. And the Bible is saying what? God asked him, well, you've been going here and there, going to and fro. But wherever you're going to and fro, have you seen my servant Job? So Job is somebody who had a testimony. If you have a testimony in your life, you are known even in heaven that you have a testimony. Because you are going to be blameless. Blameless I mean somebody who doesn't involve in sinful activities. Somebody who knows sin to be sin and fears God because God is against sin. So Job was somebody who knew God and he knew that God is against sin. So he never sinned. Number one. Number one. Why he feared the results. Number one of the results of the fear of God. The Bible is saying this. And that man was blameless and upright. It's very possible, my dear brother, my dear sister, to be upright and blameless before the Lord. Because if Job did it, how can we now say that we cannot do it? Are you aware that during those days you didn't have preachers who are telling people the word of God? Are you aware that during those days there were no people who might come and tell you that God has said we didn't have prophets in the days of Job? But this man, he feared God. This man, he knew God was there. And the Bible says, records that this man was upright and blameless before God. So it's possible for us to be blameless and upright before God. It has happened, it, it happened, it's happening right now, and it can even happen in future. So there is no excuse that somebody can say that they cannot sin. You can separate yourself from sin. He feared God, and because he feared God, the man was upright and blameless. But we have a problem with the generation of today. We are very having, we are having very few people who are blameless before God and who are upright. They are faithful people who can walk with God and do the doings of God. We are lacking such people nowadays. They are very few. Majority does not even care about God. They does not even care about the, the teachings of God. They does, not, they, 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 they does not even care about the word of God. They doesn't even care about the message that they are give, being given about God. So I was saying number one. one number one. Is that Job. Through his fear of God, God gave him great possessions. There is nobody in the entire world, there is nobody who has ever lived on planet Earth and feared God and walked with God and fails to receive. A blessing from God. How did the, how did his blessing came? His blessing.
person came because he knew whom he was walking with. So the Bible records that he had a great possession. If it were today, we would be talking about high-rise buildings owned by Job. Estates here and there, almost in every city. Manufacturing companies. Big business farms. We might even be talking of somebody owning an aeroplane. Because when we, we see what the Bible is recording about Job, and the Bible is talking about all that he possessed, if we can turn it into today's world, it can run into trillions of shillings. So anybody who has worked with God, they have received their blessings in a way or other. Because God protects his people, and God provides for his people, and God takes care of his people. That's why Job said this. Maybe, maybe, my children have sinned against God. Number one, you have, if you fear God, there are blessings that are kept in store for you. You are going to receive them because the Lord already has prepared them for you. You are destined for blessings. And the blessings they, is the, in the form of possessions. And not only possessions, even good life. And not only good life, even health, your health. The Lord is going to take care of it. That's why the Bible is talking about job Job, in the, in the, in the, later on, when he was attacked by the enemy, his health deteriorated. But even though it deteriorated, the Bible tells us that in the latter end, God gave him double, double everything that he lost, even including his health was restored number two number two is a sacrifice the bible is saying this in verses four verse five i mean and it was so when the days of their feasting were finished that job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. And Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cast God in their hearts. That Job did continually. When was the last time you went before the Lord to confess your sins? When was the last time you went before the Lord to offer a sacrifice? A sacrifice? I don't say that a sacrifice, you have to slaughter an animal. No. The sacrifice that we had for slaughtering an animal ended at Calvary, when Jesus Christ shed his blood for the remission of our sins. So we no longer offer sacrifices of animals. During this day, Job's days, Jesus had not yet come. So he was to, to offer as a, as offerings. And he used to offer even a sacrifice the, before the Lord. Because he said that they might, might, maybe, they have sinned against the Lord. So I have to sanctify them to be, to be pure and holy before the Lord. So he decided to offer sacrifice for his children. The sacrifice he can offer unto the Lord right now. Not necessarily to be in the form of an animal or burnt offering, but we can offer it in the form of repentance to the Lord. In a form of worship to the Lord. In a form of surrendering unto the Lord. 
in the form of prayer and fasting for our children, for our families. We can offer that sacrifice unto the Lord. And when we offer that sacrifice unto the Lord, the Lord is going to hear and is going to bring restoration. In case, just in case, somebody has gone astray or done something wrong to the Lord. The Lord is going to, to restore because of the sacrifice that we are going to offer unto the Lord. You know nowadays most people, they are after offering a sacrifice of money. Which is not bad also, it's okay. But there are other things that we need to offer unto the Lord, not only money. We can also offer thanksgiving offering unto the Lord. Because of what the Lord has done to us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because of what the Lord has done unto us. So we are going to thank the Lord because he's a good God. He's powerful. He's able. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One as a few son. Now the third one that I'm going to talk about is in verses 8. The Bible is saying this. The Bible is saying that, And the Lord said unto Satan, have you considered my servant's job? That, that there is none like him in the earth. A blameless and up, an upright man. One that fears God and turns away from evil. The third one is that there is a record in heaven. There is a record in heaven. This is God himself speaking. And God is asking, have you seen my servant Job? Have you considered him? A man. <laughs> there is none like him in the earth. Yet how many people are there in the earth during Job's time? There are so many people. But the Bible records that there is none like Job. Why? Because this is man who feared God. This is man who knew how to walk with God. This is man who knew how to serve God. This is a man who knew how to listen to God. He was receiving from God. So he knew the relationship between him and God. So he wanted to stay in that relationship. So the devil himself even knew. Not only God. When you are upright and blameless before God, even the devil himself is going to know that this man cannot be touched because he's the servant of God. This man has the mark of God. He belongs to God and he can never be touched by anybody else. The devil knows. That's why he told God in verses 9. What did the, 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 the devil say? He said this in verses 9. He said that, that then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Meaning, meaning there is there has to be a reason why you fear God, if you are a God-fearing person. There must be a reason why you fear God. Why? Because of your relationship with God. And my dear brother, my dear sister, what is your relationship with God today? What, what is it that you have in common with God? That God can even talk about you. God can mention your name. God can say that surely, sister so and so, brother so and so, his mind belongs to me. And I protect him. I do everything I can for the sake of his life. The Bible says that Job asked God in verses 10. Just to, he said that because you put a hedge around him. Oh my God. So God can put a hedge around somebody. God can put a hedge around his person, his servant, his child, his daughter, his son. God can put a hedge. He can surround you so that the enemy cannot see you. He can surround you so that the enemy cannot penetrate, cannot touch you, cannot reach you easily. Because God has put a hedge around you. My brother. What, what, what is it? What is it that makes you not to walk with God? That makes you not even to, to know that God can do something in your life that no man can do. That God is faithful. Once you start walking with Him, He's going to protect you. You know what? 
God told the devil, he is there, my servant, because you are saying that I put a hedge around him. Don't touch the man himself. Meaning God gave him all those things he was complaining about that God has done to Job. God gave him the authority and the power to go and touch all those things. So he touched his children. He touched his animals. Every possession he had was touched. The house was touched. His body was touched. Because the devil thought that all, only these things are the ones that keeps Job in the Lord. But I want to tell you today, there are things that can keep somebody in the Lord, not only earthly positions. Somebody who knows God is going to stay in God whether those things are there or not. Because God knows him. The most important thing is to make sure that your name is known in heaven and is being mentioned by God. Can somebody say amen? So it means that the, 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 the angels in heaven, they knew what was going on. And the Bible says they came to present themselves before God. Why were they coming to present themselves before God? Because they had come back from visiting those people who fears God. You know, when you fear God, even your protection is going to be done by the angels. It means that when God gave the, the, the Satan the opportunity to go and touch whatever belonged to Job, God withdrew the angels for some time. So that the, 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 the enemy, the devil, can know that it was not those things. that That's why Job was working with God. No, but God had a personal relationship with God. My dear brother, my dear sister, my big question to you today is, do you have a personal relationship with God? Do you have an identity with God? And if you have that identity with God, if you have that relationship with God, how is it, how is your stand concerning the word of God? I thank God because of this moment. I thank God because of the word that you have read today. I thank God because there is something God wants to do in somebody's life. And the moment has come. The moment is now. It's just that you are being waited by the heavens. So that the, the, the protection from the Lord is going to come upon you. Let me tell you, the devil can come and test you and tempt you. But in the final end, if you stand with the Lord, you are going to have more greater things than the ones that has been there before. That's what happened to Job. I want to pray with somebody today. This moment, I want to pray with somebody. Maybe you are undergoing something, but you want to walk with God. Or maybe sometimes you find it too difficult to walk with God. We want to pray for a restoration right now. And God is going to touch you. God is going to do something good to you. God is going to remember you. And God is going to walk with you. God is going to bless you. This is the time. This is the hour. This is the moment. Hallelujah. I want you to bow down your heads as we are going to pray. Our Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, this is the time I want to thank you because of my dear viewer, that today, Lord, the word that we have shared, Father, is going to do something upon his life, upon her life. It's going to change her situation, his situation. It's going to change the way things have been. Lord, I pray that you give a new direction as from now. Wherever they've been failing, oh Lord, I pray for the power of God. That, Lord, they're no longer going to, to fail again, but they're going to rise up and to walk with you and to declare thy goodness. Lord, they're going to testify of the good things you're going to do unto them. And your name is going to be glorified, O Jehovah God. Father, I pray for your protection upon their lives. The same way you protected Job, Lord. Father, protect them. The same way you walk with Job, Lord. Father, walk with them. The same way you blessed Job. Father, bless them. The same way, Lord. God fear, Job feared you. Father, let them also fear you. I thank you and I bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen. Now I want to pray with somebody. If you want to walk with God, you have to know how to walk with God and have a personal relationship with God. So I want you to be born again. I want you to be saved and walk with God. Because myself I'm saved and I want you also to be just like me. So that you can walk with God. I want to say this. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today so that you save me. I am a sinner and I've decided to live sin. Write my name in the book of life. Remove my name from the book of death. Let me receive you. I'll walk with you and follow you. In your holy name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, look for a church where the word of God is being taught and is being preached. A powerful church that is going to help you to walk in salvation. Near you. I have not said you come to our church, but I have said near you. Go and tell them I saw a pastor, Pastor Boy, preaching in, 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 on, on TV. He prayed for me and I got saved. Join that church. And if you are near where we are, Kangudo Road, please come and we fellowship together. And the Lord will bless you. My number is here on the screen, 0722-944-623 and 0731-495-873. Airtel and Safaricom, just call anytime. We'll share in the name of the Lord. Thank you and God bless you. Have a nice time. Let's meet again next week. Shalom. Hallelujah. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body.